Hey YouTube, today I'll be comparing the Godox Fresnel head on the 8200 with MagMod modifiers to the new round head using the native magnetic modifiers from Godox. Before we get into it guys, there's a lot of pieces today, so if you're looking for a link to any products, they are included in the description below. Now while I typically use some type of large modifier for my key light, I regularly use MagMod for bouncing and filling and background lights and hair lights. Admittedly, I am not the best example of what the MagMod system is truly capable of. If you want to see people who really push MagMod to its full potential, then you should check out people like Carson Scherzer, Jason Vinson, Justin Haugen, or Jared Gant. All those guys do incredible work using just the small light modifiers from MagMod. Now, the power, the Fresnel head, and the really compact size make the Godox 8200 a really popular choice for MagMod users who prioritize a really small lighting kit. So, with Godox releasing a round head and their own proprietary set of magnetic modifiers, which are really similar to MagMod's offerings, I wanted to take a look at comparing these two systems head to head. First, let's get this out of the way because otherwise this is going to be a comment like 50 times. This is more a comparison of options in using the Godox 8200, but one of the massive perks of MagMod is that using that MagGrid attachment, you can make any speed light compatible with their system. So both of these kits that we're comparing have a light modifier that would classify as either a dome, a bounce, a gel, a grid, or a snoot. All of the MagMod equipment is made of a very flexible material that can be beat on or rolled or smashed or ran over by a semi-truck and it's basically going to be unaffected. The Godox round head modifiers are all made of hard plastic and while they're not likely to break from normal photography use, it's definitely possible. And both of these systems use magnets that are plenty strong enough for both stacking and keeping a single modifier nice and secure to a flash. In terms of price, the Godox accessory kit is $50, but you also need the Godox round head for the 8200, which is $80. The equivalent options from MagMod would cost you $240, which is the professional kit plus the price of a snoot. Now I want to go over the quality of light that you get from each, kind of comparing them head to head. And just so you know, in my test, all these flashes were two feet away from the wall. First, I want to show you the difference between the round head and Fresnel head when used bare. The round head has a far more even pattern of light, while the Fresnel head has hot spots in the center and a bit on the edges where there is a ventilation gap. The round head also covers significantly more area, so understand that a majority of these light quality differences are more based on the head, not necessarily the modifiers. Using the dome on the round head, there's a tiny bit of diffusion which widens the light pattern, but it's pretty insignificant. The MagSphere, however, greatly spreads the light of the Fresnel head and evens out the pattern, and it even gets rid of the ugly edge spill. Putting the honeycomb grid on each, both do a fantastic job of concentrating the light and reducing spill. The round head has a really nice quality, but the Fresnel head still has some unevenness. Next is the snoot, fully extended to its most narrow configuration. You can see the MagMod restricts the Fresnel head far more. The Godox snoot is just too wide of an opening and too short in length to create a very tight light pattern. Here we have the snoots again pushed all the way in for their widest cast of light. The Fresnel pattern is just hideous, especially for it being this close. And while the round head looks nice, it's a really wide cast, I mean more so than even the honeycomb grid. Next up is the bounce cards. The mag bounce sends a majority of the light forward, because the mag bounce curves at the top and restricts the light from shooting upward. The round head bounce card lets a ton of light go upward towards the ceiling. There is another advantage to the round head bounce card, and that is that it is dual purpose. You can flip it around, and instead of a white bounce card, you've now got a flag, so you've got negative fill, and you can remove light from spilling in a certain direction. I'm actually surprised that MagMod has not implemented any type of flag. It'd be really nice, especially for their sphere. Next up is the gels. I've used the MagMod gels for over a year now, so I'm well aware that their correction gels tend to be a little too strong. I consider full CTO designed to match 3200 degrees Kelvin. But I find on my flash equipment that a full CTO gel from MagMod will be closer to 3000 degrees Kelvin. And that's the case today when I neutralized where the flash hit, the color temperature was around 3000 Kelvin. And while the Godox does put out a correct color temperature of 3200 degrees Kelvin, it comes with a heavy green tint. A green tint that took plus 19 magenta to correct. I just can't recommend a gel that has that much tint because it's going to create color imbalances between the ambient environments and subjects being lit with flash. It's also important to mention here that MagMod has a very diverse set of both correction and color effect gels. 
The Godox kit is shipping with only four gels and have not announced any plans to expand on that kit. Last thing to talk about is the dramatic light output difference. The nature of the round head casting a wider pattern of light as well as being diffused to cast a more even pattern of light both dramatically reduce the light output. Here's a comparison between two bulbs and each of the modifiers. The only other big difference between this kit is that I find that the Godox Roundhead kit takes up far less space. So I think the big difference here is quality of light versus power of light. Using the MagMod products along with the Fresnel head, you'll definitely get more light output to work with. But using the Roundhead, you'll get a much more even quality of light. Not because it's round at all, just because it's a very predictable and even pattern that makes focusing it on a subject really easy. Whereas a Fresnel head is just liable to cause some really strange lines appearing on your subject. While these lines are really apparent when you see them on a white wall, they'll be much less apparent when you're photographing a subject when there's a lot of different contrast and colors and skin happening. Like it's not gonna show up as much in a regular photo. So all in all, I think these two options are different enough to make it clear which will better serve different users. If you're looking for the most light output, you're definitely gonna to wanna to stick with the Fresnel head using MagMod equipment. But if you're looking for a more budget-friendly option or just a better quality of light, maybe you're not using it in such demanding light conditions, then you'll be better off with the round head and the proprietary modifiers. For me, I'll definitely be using this round head on the 8200s, but I'll continue using MagMod on my speed lights. It's not really clear what I'll use long-term until I see what else Godox decides to implement this round head design into. Thanks for watching guys, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more, comment below with any questions, and until next time, keep on shooting YouTube.